Good morning, everyone. I am Jo Thomas, the CEO of Australian Institute of Business, uh, and your MC for the day. It gives me great delight to welcome you all to our 2022 graduation. It has been a long wait for the people in this room. I would now like to ask everyone to please be upstanding, having just told you to take your seats, please be upstanding for the academic procession as we welcome the members of our academic team to the stage. Please be seated. We finally made it. You finally made it. Our first graduation in over two years. I'd like to commence today's proceedings by welcoming a veritable roster of distinguished guests who have joined us today to celebrate your achievements. The Lord Mayor, Sandy Virchow, Uncle Mickey Gumachi, sorry, Gumatpi Muracha O'Brien, and our keynote speaker, Tammy Barton, members of our board of directors, our executive team, our academic board, and of course you, our soon-to-be graduates and your guests. As I mentioned, today is our first in-person graduation for over two years, and it's still not quite back to normal. Please ensure you wear your mask at all times throughout the ceremony. So graduates, you will be able to take them off for photos. If a fire alarm sounds, and let's hope that it doesn't, please follow the directions of the wonderful Adelaide Convention Centre staff who will make sure that you and your guests are taken somewhere safe. That's enough of the housekeeping, not too much. Graduation day is one of great celebration for our graduates, their friends and families, and for all of us who work at the Australian Institute of Business. For us, it is when we get to experience the great privilege of seeing the work that we do every day come to fruition in transforming the careers and the lives of you, our graduates. It is a day when we come together to recognise the end of a long and sometimes arduous journey for you, not for us, um, and celebrate those of you who took not only the first step that so few people take, but saw it through to completion a truly rare achievement and one of which you should be extraordinarily proud. We know that there were missed soccer games, kids' parties, late nights and countless other sacrifices along the way. And not just by you, but by your partners, your families, your friends, your co-workers and your employers. Study can often feel like a solo endeavour, but we know that it is impossible without the support of the people around you. And so, on behalf of our graduates, thank you to everyone who has supported them along the way. I have met <laughs> Let's give them a Thank you. I have mentioned celebration a few times, and while today is a solemn, sorry, it's not, it is a serious occasion, but it should not be a solemn one. As each person crosses the stage, they will really only be front and centre here for a few seconds. A few seconds that represents hundreds of hours 
and in many cases years of hard work and effort. So when your loved one or the people that you know cross the stage, make some noise, celebrate that moment because you only get to do it once. <laughs> We are so proud to be a global organisation and we recognise the traditional custodians of the lands on which all of our students studies, both here in Australia and overseas. Today, we meet on the lands of the Ghana people and I would like to welcome Uncle Mickey, Mickey Gumatpi Muracha O'Brien to the stage now. Uncle Mickey is a senior Aboriginal man, a descendant of the Ghana, the Adelaide Plains people, and Ranga. York Peninsula people and a passionate advocate for Aboriginal culture, language and history. And we are honoured to have him here to welcome us to country today. Welcome Uncle Mickey. Tuila Mani Budni Tuila Wakinapadni. Now, Mani. Oh, we've got no Ghana speakers. So the language of the Ghana people uh, to say hello is Namani, and your response will be Mani I back. So Namani. Ah, nature, you better. So now Ghana Biko, Makalankala, Marwachanga, Ghana Mina. Minya na Namani Puruji. No, Nari Kamati Marita. No, Wangadi Mani the Budni Gani Yatana, Irindi Yata, Tandandanga, Karawirapara, um, the candy uh, pulti. So, welcome, welcome to the lands of the Ghana people. And uh, today, uh, we not only sit on the dreaming place of the big red kangaroo, but alongside uh, the River Torrens being the Red Gum Forest River. An important place, a gathering place. Uh, Adelaide itself was uh, known as a place of bumba bumbaya, meaning conference, meaning meeting. We were known as the educational people and uh, all our nation's peoples came to Adelaide to share and exchange in knowledge and wisdom. And so it is in wonderful to be here to celebrate your uh, graduation and to, to not only welcome you, because a welcome isn't just about saying hello. Uh, we call upon the spirit people of our ancestors to bring good blessings, to send away those sad things that sometimes follows. But it says really, our face tells us where we've been and our heart tells us where to go. And that's wonderful things to know, because it says our muka muka being our brain collects knowledge and wisdom which is what you've been doing. But it is with our goltu being our heart that allows us to use it for the benefit, not only of ourselves, for others in our community and our workplaces. And I know you'll do that. But it's saying, are you well when you come to a place, and particularly uh, in today's uh, environment, uh, wellness is very important. And so I wanna share a story, a story that really, I suppose, tells your journey, your journey of becoming graduates. And this story is a story about a young person going to the great elder to ask that great elder to, in some ways, give them the knowledge and the wisdom of their people so that they can be a future leader. And so the wise elder gave the young person a kangaroo skin bag like this one with some items in it, told the young person to climb that mountain and they had four days to climb that mountain. And then on the fifth day, the great elder would meet them. So on that first day of climbing the mountain, they heard something that frightened them. The second day, something came running towards them and they ran down that mountain. The third day was a hot day and they went in search of water. The fourth day, they were hungry and had to find food. So on that fifth day, they sat at the bottom of the mountain where the great elder met them and the great elder could see that this young person was saddened in their eyes. And so the great elder said to the young person, why are you so sad? And they said, well, I didn't achieve what you asked and therefore I can't be a good leader of their people. And the great elder said, well, I want you to reach into your bag and I want you to explain what actually happened on those four days. Well, he said on that first day, of climbing the mountain, I heard a snake. It was in the bushes and it frightened me and I ran it down the mountain. So he reached into his bag and he pulled out a symbol of an ear saying that in life, we have to have great listening ears. 
not only to hear the dangers that are around us, but more importantly, to have the inquiring ears to hear the words of the people so that therefore we can have the knowledge of the people and therefore we can share the words of the people. He said, what happened on that second day? He said, well, there was a big parenti, a big goanna, a big lizard that ran towards me and chased me down the mountain. And again, he reached into the bag and he pulled out a symbol, a symbol of an eye saying that in life, we have to use our observation eyes, not only to see the obstacles in front of us so that we can avoid the dangers, but more importantly, we need to know our past, our present, so that we can move towards the future, so that we can take people there. He said, what happened on that third day? Well, he said, great order, I became thirsty, it was a hot day, and so I went in search of water. And again, he reached in the bag and he pulled out a symbol of water saying that water is important for our survival, being made of 70% of water. But more importantly, when we search all corners of the earth, we're enabled to collect the knowledge that we need to use for our people. So searching for knowledge in, is very important. He said, what happened on that fourth and final day? He said, great elder, well, I became hungry. And so I, I went in search of a kangaroo, which again, he then pulled out an item, an image of a kangaroo, saying that the tanda is not only giving us food, because food is, again, important for us, but it's saying that in life, we take what we need, not what we want, and we share everything that we have. And when we look after those things, we become better people, we become a better society and community. And so like you, you have taken that journey. And like the elder said to the young person, you will become a great leader, not because you reached the top of the mountain, but because you took the journey. Because taking the journey is the hardest part. Reaching the top of the mountain can sometimes be the easy part. And so you've searched for knowledge, you've gained knowledge, you've heard the knowledge, you've sought that knowledge, and so therefore today is about you reaching or climbing that mountain and that journey. And so I wish you well as you continue to climb and to use that knowledge and wisdom, which you can then connect to your heart. Because when we do that, we get so much more from it all. So I leave you these words. My unjiga, my unjiga, nachi yukandaya, nachi yakandaya, padni adu, adu, it's saying that we are truly all brothers and sisters, that when we walk the land, we do it together in harmony, recognise that cultures should bring us together, never divide us. Our people not only had no word for hello, but we had no word for goodbye, because we understood the importance of relationships and connections. So I say to you, nakara being, see you later. Because we don't just say, we see you in the physical, we see you in the spiritual, because it's the things that we leave that is everlasting. So nakara, nechaya, thank you for coming, because when you come to a place, you are the important people. So nakara, nechaya, may the spirit people continue to walk with you all. Thank you. It was outstanding. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mickey, and, and thank you for telling a story that really does reflect the journey that everyone here has gone on. I'm now delighted to welcome the Right Honourable Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Sandy Verscore, to address our graduates. Manina Pudni, Nadalu Tampandi, Nadalu Ghana, Yatanga Dakandi. Welcome to you all, and I also acknowledge we're on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship with this beautiful land. And thank you, Uncle Mickey. Um, I've known Uncle Mickey for many years now, and he always tells just the best stories. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge today's keynote speaker, Tammy Barton, founder of My Budget and a leading South Australian entrepreneur, the AIB Board of Directors, members of the academic board and committees, and most importantly, all of the graduates and their families and friends. 
Today is a, a really special day as you celebrate the remarkable achievement of obtaining your MBA. Undertaking an MBA is an incredibly rewarding experience and not without its challenges, particularly over the last couple of years. So congratulations to you all for having achieved this and I'm uh, glad to, that we can be here to celebrate this in person. Over the past couple of years, we've seen firsthand how quickly things can change and the importance of being able to innovate and adapt in the face of great disruption. In times like this, the greatest investment you can make is in yourself. All of you here have made that investment and the skills and knowledge that you have gained will last you a lifetime. It is exciting here in Adelaide to be graduating with an MBA as our city continues to expand with innovation and creative capability. We are home to an uh, incredible growing ecosystem of technology, defence, creative industries and my council is uh, strategically investing in making Adelaide a vibrant and culturally alive city where our people can have the jobs and opportunities and lifestyles that they want in Australia's most livable city. Um, the city of Adelaide is a place to connect people with opportunities to encourage innovation and entrepreneurship. It is in our DNA. And we work hard to promote startups and development of local businesses. So with your new qualifications, there are endless opportunities for you in your career. In fact, only a year before I became Adelaide's only third female Lord Mayor in 185 years, ladies, um, I was where you are. I completed my MBA with the Australian Institute of Business in 2017. Um, after more than two decades of working in arts and culture. I was the past CEO of the Adelaide Fringe, the Adelaide Festival. Um, I worked uh, on Wom Adelaide for five years, started the um, film festival. So I'd worked in arts and culture for about 20 years before I transitioned into local government as a general manager for the city of Adelaide uh, and running my own businesses. And I, I honestly can say that the skills and experience as well as the connections that I made through gaining uh, my degree have been absolutely invaluable, um, not just not only in my own work, but also in working with my executive at the Adelaide City Council and the CEO through this pandemic and um, looking at what we can do to make sure that we have the strategy right for investing in our city for the future. We are rebounding very well and we've sort of really been focusing on the recovery and so we are looking to the next generation of city leaders. Adelaide, uh, I think, is in good stead and it's great to see so many graduates here ready to take the helm of the businesses over the next few years, if not already. Um, when I uh, decided to do my MBA in entrepreneurship, um, I took with me three of my managers, portfolio managers. Um, we, I, I, am, I absolutely believe in lifelong learning and, um, and I worked with three of them. They did different subjects. One of them did the um, MBA in entrepreneur, entrepreneurship with me and has gone on to amazing things in her own career. I do believe that education transforms lives and you always need to be ready to embrace new knowledge and head in new directions. The, this ability that you have to open your mind uh, and learn new skills, methods and philosophies is a key to continued personal development and growth. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Sometimes, as we know, sadly I do know, some of the best ideas and the best learnings and opportunities for growth come from doing things that went wrong. Um, so please don't let the fear of failure hold you back in any way. We all celebrate the things that go right, but actually the learning from things that go wrong are the things that make us better and more resilient and really focus on those strategic outcomes. So please always be prepared to have a go and try new things. Um, we are really incredibly fortunate in Adelaide to have a world-class online higher education provider like Australian Institute of Business in our city. And the Australian Institute of Business plays a really important role in helping people from all over the world to reach new heights in their careers with more than 18,000 graduates from more than 90 countries worldwide. And this is absolutely brilliant that we can celebrate that 
right here from Adelaide. I encourage you to stay in contact with the Institute and also those people that you've met through your course. Um, it's really important to connect and collaborate with people who are equally as passionate um, about the things that you have learned. The relationship that you've developed during your studies is ready-made with a support network for you and you can go forward sharing those experiences, um, celebrating your successes and obviously reflecting on the challenges that you've been. Congratulations once again. It's a really special achievement. I wish you all the best for a very bright future. And uh, as Uncle Mickey said, Natalia Nakada. Thank you. For the microphone now, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, every year we invite an inspirational and successful business person to, ad to address our graduates, to share their story of growth and to impart some further lessons to take you to the next level. Today, we are incredibly honoured to have Tammy Barton, who many people may know as Tammy May, the founder and CEO of My Budget as our keynote speaker. Tammy has won many awards, including twice being awarded twice, the Telstra Businesswoman of the Year, Entrepreneur in South Australia. She's inspirational and is often regarded as one of our leading businesswomen. We are delighted to have you here with us today, Tammy, and I welcome you to the stage. Thank you, it's really exciting to be here today. I too also would like to acknowledge this land that we met on today is the traditional lands for the Kaurna people and we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. As I said, it's an absolute pleasure to be here today and especially to see you all in your graduation gowns and in your caps. It's one of the few times that as adults, you know, you get to wear a cape in public and not look like you're trying to be a football mascot or a superhero, so I hope you're making the most of it. It's also wonderful to be here in person to witness your investment in learning. As a business owner and an employer and as someone who is really passionate about human potential, I can't underestimate how important education is. I truly believe knowledge is power. And just like the Lord Mayor said, investing in yourself and in learning is one of the most important investments you'll ever make in your life. I know that for some of you, this degree may be your first time doing any sort of formal study. It might be the first time that anyone in your family has ever done any sort of formal study or done a master's degree or any degree at all. So starting an MBA, it's commendable in itself, but actually finishing it is an incredible accomplishment, something you should be so proud of. Your MBA not only equips you for your business, but it proves your tenaciousness and also your spirit. It signals that you have the right ingredients for success. Ingredients like determination, perseverance, accountability, resilience, and importantly, the pursuit of knowledge. So let's talk for a second about determination. And by that, I mean endurance, stamina, and the ability to see something through to the end. Not only did you set your sights high on the goal of achieving an MBA, but I know that most of you, whilst doing that, whilst you set that goal for yourself, most of you were working and you're working full time. And many of you have partners and children and you have a lot going on in your life. And not to mention, there was this small other thing that you had to deal with, the pandemic. I don't even want to think about how challenging that must have been. You know, you were doing an MBA, you might have even been homeschooling, all, all of that and doing your, your MBA and working full time. My hat goes off to you but it all points to your incredible tenacity. Personally, I wasn't doing an MBA during COVID, but I was trying to run my business, my budget from home, as well as homeschool three kids. And at the beginning of COVID, we had to mobilise 200 people to work from home, which we did just in three days. And it was, well, let's just say, 
you know, it was pretty intense. If you mapped our path from A to B, it definitely wasn't a straight line. We had people that were running to Bunnings to buy makeshift desks for people because people didn't have desks at home or they couldn't use, didn't even have kitchen tables that they were able to use as a desk. We didn't have enough monitor arms. A lot of our monitor arms at work were fixed. We couldn't take them with us. We couldn't buy any anywhere. We couldn't even get them online. So we had to run to music shops and buy guitar stands to, you know, to put people's monitors on these makeshift desks at home. But it happened and, you know, it wasn't smooth sailing, but we got there. We got to the finish. And you know, in that point from A to B, there was that really messy middle, which does happen when you're making decisions on the run, but we got there in the end. And given these recent unprecedented times, it's possible that your MBA journey was the same. And so, if so, don't let that messy middle distract from your achievement. And just as, and just as Mickey said, you know, he talked about that journey. Sometimes the messy journeys are the most rewarding. They take us to unprecedented places. We discover new things about ourselves and we emerge from the chaos. Even if you may you know, look like you've had one too many tequilas, you emerge from that chaos stronger and better, unlike when we've had one too many tequilas. It's a bit like that story of the caterpillar. You know, the caterpillar literally has to liquefy its cocoon to turn itself into a butterfly which is pretty amazing, really. So let's talk about accountability. To me, accountability means taking ownership. No excuses. This is my life, my choices, my actions, and as a direct result, my consequences, whether they're good or whether they're bad. None of us can control everything, but the thing that we can control is the way that we choose to respond. And one of my earliest lessons in accountability was in my teenage years. I grew up as one of four children to parents who were very young. My mum, my mum had me when she was just 16. And our family life was also complicated by the fact that my brother Josh was born with, a, with Angelman syndrome. And Angelman is a genetic disorder that comes with severe intellectual disabilities. My parents were incredibly patient with my brother Josh. But just like most kids, I was still learning about patience. It was something I had to learn about. But when it comes to this story, I was 14 or 15, and I was still in school, and I got my first part-time job. And as well as giving me some money to play with, it also gave me that, that sense of independence. It felt exciting to me that I could exchange my time for money and be able to save up for those things that I wanted. It wasn't as if I grew up poor, but there was always that feeling at home that money was tight. You know, there was enough to go around, but not really anything left over. And my dad was a builder, which meant that we went through periods of feast or famine. And my mum, to be honest, was not that great with money. She wasn't that great with budgeting. And that's basically because she didn't know how to say no. She's incredibly kind and generous. My mum would give her last dollar to you. Say, Lord Mayor, if you needed a dollar, if you needed some money, it was my mum's last one, she would absolutely give it to you. And I can remember numerous times where the power or the phone, you know, nearly got cut off, or my mum, you know, was waiting for the check to clear so she could go do the food shopping. And when you grow up like that, it makes you really mindful about money. I rarely ask for my mum to buy me things, not because I thought she would say no, but because she would say yes, and I knew that we just couldn't afford it. So you can imagine how having some money of my own felt. I knew exactly what I was going to do with it. My first ever pay went towards saving for me to go on holiday with my uncle and auntie and cousins on a driving trip to Queensland. And it was so exciting. But I also went and bought some Pantene shampoo and conditioner. Now, I'm not sure if you remember the Pantene ads from the 90s, but in case you missed it, or maybe you weren't old enough, Pantene is a supermarket shampoo. But when it launched, it seemed really luxurious and fancy. Plus, when it came to the Pantene promise, it won't happen overnight, but it will happen to my teenage mind. That was like the holy grail of hair care. So when I brought it home, just putting it in the shower and seeing it, it made me feel special. I was so excited about it. And when the shampoo, you know, I tipped it into my hand, it felt like liquid gold to me. And how did my hair look afterwards? Well, to be honest, Really not that different, but that's okay. I was learning patience. I had to remember that it wouldn't happen overnight, but it would happen. And I was learning to be patient. 
except there was one little problem, and that was my brother Josh's curiosity. And so while I was out, the very next day, so the very next day after getting my Pantene shampoo and conditioner, Josh noticed the new bottles in the bathroom, and just like me, he was captivated by this Pantene, and not only by the bottles, but what was inside. And you probably already guessed where I'm going with this story. But Josh started playing with it, and he tipped every last drop of the contents down the drain. There was nothing left in the bottle. And you could imagine when I discovered this, the range of teenage emotions I went through. I was so angry, I was so mad, and I was angry at my mum, and I was angry at my brother. But the person I was most angry at was myself. Because I know, I knew that Josh liked new things, especially sparkly, shiny things like shampoo and conditioner, and I knew that I shouldn't have left the bottles in the shower. And my mum, she started feeling really bad too, and she knew that even though she couldn't afford it, she offered to give me the bottle, uh, the, the money, sorry, to buy another couple of bottles. And that's when I realised, no, the person who needed to fix this was me. Accepting the money from my mum would be wrong on so many levels. It was up to me to take responsibility for my actions, good or bad. And in my own, you know, very teenage way, I realised that I, to really enjoy the rewards, I would have to do the work. It's not about what you get out, but it's about what you put in. It's about the, sac the sacrifices you're willing to make. A few extra hours working at Hungry Jack's to buy some more. And it's the work that you're willing to do and the price that you're willing to pay. And for that same reason, that's why sitting here in this graduation ceremony today feels so good for you, because you did the work. Nobody climbed the mountain for you. So this is your victory. It's your climb, which makes it your victory. Even if the middle was made messy by the pandemic and other forces outside of your control, you did this. Even if it took twice as long as it was supposed to, it didn't happen overnight, but it did happen, right? If you take the same approach into your next venture and the one after that and so on, you'll be virtually unstoppable. Also keep in mind that this is just the beginning. The seeds of your MBA education are still taking root. The benefits are going to keep growing and blossoming and bearing fruit over the coming months, years and decades. And as we learn new things, we open our eyes and minds to new ideas and further horizons and begin to see different possibilities, not only for ourselves but for the world around us. Much like the caterpillar emerging from its cocoon as a butterfly, you are about to take flight. And if you haven't already started thinking about it, I encourage you to think about where you want to be. Where do you want to have an impact? Is it at work, at home, in your community, or even globally? Don't underestimate the fact that you can make a genuine, important difference in this world. And if you think that you're too old, keep in mind Colonel Sanders, he started KFC when he was 65. Nelson Mandela was 75 before he became president of South Africa. Or maybe you might feel like you're too young. Well, let's reflect on the fact that Melanie Perkins, one of Australia's youngest billionaires, dropped out of uni at 19 to start Canva. And I say this as someone who knows what it's like to question my destiny. In my case, I was too young, too inexperienced, too female, too blonde. The financial service industry was very much a male-dominated industry and a much older demographic. I mean, it's still a bit like that today, but especially 20 years ago. So when I started my budget, I was an outsider. I was 22 and a woman, and I'd never been to uni. But I saw a way to help people, to connect the dots in a way that nobody else was doing. And I think being different is what helped me to think differently. And just to give you a brief history, I was working in a legal firm here in Adelaide, and they also had a debt collection service where I was working. And debt collection is that type of job where you need to invest a lot of time into it for not a lot of results, which is why it didn't take long for me to realise I was part of the problem and not the solution. And I felt frustrated that I couldn't find anywhere that I could refer my clients to to get some proper help. So I found myself trying to create budgets for people while I was on the phone with them or trying to coach them about credit laws or how to apply for financial hardship. And when you do that day in and day out, you start to see that financial stress isn't a result of people being lazy or silly with their money. It's often the opposite. Most people are incredibly busy and hardworking, but they get blindsided by some sort of sudden change in their life, whether it be a job loss or 
divorce, separation, sickness, whatever it might be, or it's the, cu the cumulative effects of overspent spending suddenly come crashing down on them. And it's easy to think, well, why don't these people go and talk to their banks or their credit card company? Because it doesn't work like that. Traditional retail banking is transactional. The bank sends you a statement at the end of the month and it shows you what happened in the past. Even if you were to log in and check your account every day, it's still a historical picture. It's like eating all the donuts, then getting on the scale. You don't see the effects until it's too late. So I wanted to help people by creating a future focus system. One that would help people plan a path out of debt, a system where you can see what's possible because of the projection of the future and not a reflection of the past. If you want to get ahead, you need to look ahead. You don't need a historical summary of your past mistakes. You need a map that shows you your path to your destination. And when someone makes that transition from focusing on the problems of the past to the possibilities of the future, the transformation can be outstanding. They start to achieve goals faster than they ever thought possible. And I'm sharing this with you, not because I want you to make a budget, but because the message is to look ahead, eyes forward, focus to the future, because that's where all your power and potential lies for you, not behind you. By all means, learn from the past, but don't dwell there. Don't beat yourself up on coulda, shoulda, woulda. Set your sights on the future. Set, work out what you desire for you and your family or your business or your workplace or even the world and dare to create that action plan. It doesn't matter if your plan is just one little step at a time. In fact, sometimes that's all you can do because you're going where no one has gone before. There's no clear path to follow. It's that messy middle again. Sometimes you're forced to go off road and it can be, it can be rough and it can be dark and it can be hard to navigate. You might look back and wonder if it's safer to stick to the roads you already know. Would it be easier to turn around, go back, pick the low hanging fruit or choose smaller goals? Well, lastly, I would like to talk about the pursuit of knowledge. In any realm of success, I think it's most, the most important quality of all. If you're not learning, you're not growing. And if you're not growing, you're actually shrinking in comparison to the world of knowledge around you. Personal growth is a metaphor, but it turns out to be physical too. Science is actually discovering that our brains are incredible lifelong learning machines. It means the brain that you started with before you started your MBA is physically different to the one that you're graduating with. And today you're graduating with a master's of business administration degree. What does mastery mean in today's world? It means that you've dived deep, you've immersed yourself, and more importantly, it signals that your knowledge has also come from experience. It doesn't just come from books. It comes from practical experience, trial and error, success and failure. It's that messy middle. But most important of all is the idea that the path to mastery, whether that's mastering a skill or a craft or a profession, is actually the path of mastering oneself. And by finishing your MBA, you've not only overcome all the assessment challenges, you not only overcome work and family pressures and a pandemic, but you overcame the biggest obstacle of them all, and that is yourself. And that's why you get to wear the cape today. You've earned superhero status. And even though you have to give the cape back, you get to keep all the qualities that it represents. They are yours for life. So congratulations on your new wings and thank you for inviting me to witness your emergence into a world of limitless possibilities and transformation. Thank you. That was so wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tammy. I love the if you want to get ahead, you need to look ahead. And someone once gave me a metaphor that the, the ratio of how you pay attention to your life is the same as in the car, where the window at the front is the big one and there's just a glance at that little mirror to make sure that nothing's sneaking up on you. I would now like to welcome Emeritus Professor Hilary Winchester, the chairperson of our academic board for the academic address and to present the Teaching Excellence Awards. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for inviting me here again today um, for the academic address. Um, so 
I, as you've been told, I'm chair of the academic board of the AIB, and I think it's, for me, a, a real pleasure and privilege to stand before you today. Um, I can't see you very well behind your masks, but I think you look quite happy, um, smiling. You've accomplished your goal. You've achieved your qualifications and you're a success. And in that, you are an inspiration to us all. So congratulations to you sitting here today. It is a day to celebrate. Celebrate the end of that study journey, which has been uh, rocky, exciting, puzzling, tiring, sometimes downright difficult. So today, I hope you have a great day and that you take yourselves and your families out to lunch. Let me remind you that today you become part of a graduation tradition that's been going on for centuries in many countries, across many cultures. You've climbed that mountain. You add a qualification to your name. You now have evidence of and formal recognition for your expertise. And this new qualification opens doors of opportunity to the future. But I think it's important too to congratulate all the people at the back there. They're the people who have suffered with you or because of you, who have endured you being grumpy irritable, too busy, too tired, all those things. They've cooked you meals. They've looked after you. And study can be a lonely thing, but it intrudes on all the other people in your lives. So thank you to, to the parents, to the tolerant spouses, to the children. There's some tiny children there too, and I think they've probably suffered as well, and other family and friends. And it actually reminds me that what you have been doing is not just for you, but it's also for them. And it reminded me of my own parents, you know, and I'm, I'm just thinking about that that it reminds me of my father and his mother died before I was born. All right, she died of TB. And TB is a disease that comes with poverty and squalor and dampness. So my father left school at 14. And for years, and of course, before I knew him, before he was a father, he went to night school, because that's what people did in those days. They went to night school to get their qualifications. And he worked and he became a chartered secretary. I'm not quite sure what that is or was, but he had a slide rule. Do you remember slide rules? And he had a ruler which wasn't flat, but was actually cylindrical. Strange are things that you remember. But my abiding memory of him is actually sitting at our big square dining table. And it was square and there were four of us children and two parents and we always sat in the same places. But in the evening, he would sit there with his books and later on with his marking because from doing night school, he went on to do an external degree. Now, you've done external degrees, but there was nothing online. There was no internet. There were packets of stuff that came in the mail. And he would work there night after night. It's my abiding memory. And as he progressed in his career, he became a teacher at the College of Technology, um, became a polytechnic, and, and sometimes I'd help him add up the marks. Um, um, I'm still reasonably good at mental arithmetic. Um, so 
That's what he did. But what his sacrifice meant was that for us four children, we had the amazing privilege of going to university straight from school. Straight from school, full time, doing the full campus bit, you know, sports clubs, um, getting drunk once or twice. Uh, you know, growing up, having that um, on-campus experience. And it was through his efforts that he paid it forward to the next generation. And I see that that's what you've been doing too. Because what you have done over the last two years, or however long it's been, is to pave the way for your career, and therefore your for your family and for your dependents, and uh, as Tammy was saying, for the future and not for the past. I'm not going to talk for long. You've been talked, you had three people talking, so I won't go on much longer. But there are graduates here today, not just from South Australia, but from all over the country and from overseas. When I did the first speech, in 2017, I think it was, when I became chair of the academic board here, we gave congratulations to the 10,000th graduate. And to hear that there are now 18,000 is amazing. And AIB has done extraordinarily, extraordinarily well. And you are part um, of that journey. I hope that the business degrees that you've earned today will equip you to take yourselves further in your quest to go where you want to go and to be what you want to be. And to do that um, not only for yourselves, um, but for, the, for your families and for the future. I think that your education, and I've seen it all pretty close up, it all comes for scrutiny to the academic board, it equips you to be a success. You've made a valuable addition to your own resources, to do well for yourself, to make a positive contribution uh, to your small world and to the world at large. The challenge, I think, for you is to consciously take what you've learned uh, from your degree and for this difficult journey and difficult time that you've been through into your workplaces, into your communities, indeed into the whole of your lives, and to continuously strive to enrich your knowledge and your skill. What I'd like to do now is also to acknowledge the fantastic work that's been done by the teaching staff and the researchers um, of AIB. And I'd like us to acknowledge today the winners of this year's Teaching Excellence Awards. Uh, there's Bora Kezer, who is a member of our academic board, um, Prajit Depp, and uh, highly commended Mahan Purhasenzadi. So please congratulate um, those uh, teachers of AIB. And <laughs> and congratulations again to you all. We are about to uh, start the actual award of the graduation certificates. So I'd like to welcome the Lord Mayor back on stage to present awards and Associate Professor Diane Calendra to read out the names.
for the award of Graduate Certificate in Management, Rebecca Chesserich. Please come forward. For the award of Master of Business Administration, Dasni Abisakara. <laughs> Jeffrey Arnell, who is also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. Michael Awad, also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. <laughs> Aminata Ba. Selma Barlow, also recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. <laughs> Anthony Barry, also recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. Dean Breckell. <laughs> Cooney Burton. <laughs> Quisley in Capito. <laughs> Yik Man Ki Chan, who is also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. <laughs> Sharon Chinyani. Kurt Cotter. <laughs> Yang Zi Kui. <laughs> Fiona Dawson. Magdalene DeWitt. Edward Dunlop, also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award.
Magaj Fernando. Lisa Fitzpatrick, who is also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. Alicia Foster. Philip Henderson. Shannon Hockley. Jared Ingle. Victor Jerry's. Emily Jimenez. Eloise Joseph. <laughs> Shantanu Joshi. Ross Joyner. Con Calivas Serge Alain Capuya Susan Kettle Omir Khan. Mebo Lai. Felix Larkin. Jessica Laubscher, who is also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. <laughs> Nicholas Laubscher. <laughs> Catherine Levasque. David Maguta. <laughs> Visitor McKee. <laughs> Jason Marriott. Ian Matlin, who is also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. <laughs> J. 
Josephine McClure. Claire McKechnie. Taylor Menz, also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. Drew Michelle. Stasha Malekish. Stefan Neal. David O'Connor. Janine Paerwai. Belaj Pereira. Samuel Pulo. Lachlan Pope. Niraj Prasai. James William Randerson. Cheryl Remus. Alan Roa <laughs> William Robinson <laughs> Stephanie Ross Lewis Grosser. <laughs> ne Jana Ong Binti Saiful Ong. <laughs> Merjan Savik. Ilonka Schneider. <laughs> Katie Simpson. <laughs> Lucinda Smith.
Helen Sutton. Christian Sido. David Whitfield. Larango Wickramasekra. Jackie Wiggins. For the award of Master of Business Administration, Entrepreneurial Management, Susanna Mills. Errol Pereira. For the award of Master of Business Administration Finance, Mark Lennock, who is also a recipient of the Dean's Merit Award. Jake Pulo. Rachel Simpson. Jai Tomlinson. For the award of Master of Business Administration, Human Resource Management, Asha Anand. Joanne Fox. Grant McGregor. Gillian Malloy. Maggie Pather. Christy Phillips. <laughs> July Turia. <laughs> Anne Wilson. Melinda Wood. For the award of Master of Business Administration, Logistics and Supply Chain Management, Timothy Moore. For the award of Master of Business Administration Marketing Management, Ricky Ologo. Cassandra Cunningham. Michael Parry.
We'd also like to acknowledge the following graduates who couldn't be here today. Matthew Clark, Carlo Henji Fernando, Donna Marie Broadley, Jared Twig, and Kakula Surya Fernando. That concludes the degree conferrals. Congratulations. I would also like to uh, apologise to Dasni Abesekara, who we missed at the very beginning, with an absent Rebecca. So I, uh, I would like to particularly acknowledge Dasni um, for that, for missing her. So congratulations. She didn't get her own applause. So thank you to Hilary and, and Diane and the Lord Mayor for conferring the awards. And a huge congratulations. You are no longer graduates, you are now graduates. We are so proud of you and thrilled to welcome you to our global community of fellow alumni. 18,000 or so strong. There were hundreds more graduates who couldn't be with us today. And so we want to also acknowledge them. Behind me is the list, hopefully, Behind me is a list of those names, and I'd like to specially mention those who are hosting watch parties today, so we are streaming this live. Um, and I would like to acknowledge Gail McNeil and Sean Widmark, who are watching from Canada. Uh, Thomas Sandrin is also having a watch party uh, with Amanda Joy Pineda, Enna Sadozi, Victoria Jung, Janet Madum, Kramatula Baig, and Susan Enners. And Brent Lee is also joining us today from Canada. Please enjoy the uh, please enjoy the names.
representing everyone, whether here or not. Felt a little bit like the Oscars with the uh, with the credits playing, but I promise there won't be as much drama, because I would now like to welcome um, our academic dean uh, and core member of our AAB team, Professor Ingrid Day, to present the valedictorian awards. Thanks, Joe. It's a huge pleasure to announce the valedictorians for uh, 2020. The AIB Valedictorian Award recognises students for outstanding academic performance by MBA students in each year of study. It's important to note that the award is made for both academic merit, outstanding academic merit, and also to those who have, who have shown exemplary ethical conduct. The award is presented to the student or students who have achieved the highest what we call grade point average. Where more than one student meets the criteria for valedictorian, those with the highest overall mark for the final capstone subject, project, are presented with a valedictorian award. I'm pleased to invite the winners of the awards to the stage. Um, and first of all, I would welcome Selma Barlow. Thank you. And our next recipient, Jessica Lobsha. And our next recipient, Mark Lennox. And our final recipient, the valedictorian with the highest GPA, achieving a maximum score of seven, um, David Whiting. To the Australian Institute of Business, I would just like to thank you all for bringing us together in person. It's been a long time. And for hosting what I can only imagine is one of the largest double graduations in ARB history. So thank you very much. When I was told I'd received the Valedictorian Award and I was, would have the honor and privilege of speaking to fellow alumni today, the 1st of April, I was uh, obviously a little bit suspicious. <laughs> you see, for many years, I've been proudly responsible for an array of April Fool's Day jokes, all at my sister's expense. And I feared that today was her opportunity at revenge on a scale that would surpass all my previous expectations. <laughs> Thankfully, I have reliable intel that this is indeed a coincidence, and I'm extremely grateful and humbled to be speaking to and on behalf of the 14 cohorts covering close to 2,000 alumni today. When we started our journey, we were challenged to reflect, and reflection became a huge part of our studies. So I thought it would be appropriate to take a trip and look back on the journey that has brought us all together today. Welcome to Orientation Week. I'd like to introduce you to your new friend. His name is Referencing. <laughs> With me, I have a 60-page document that will give you great detail into how badly you have been writing for the last 10 years. <laughs> Please, up your game. And remember, Big Brother is watching you, or should I say, Turnitin is generating your similarity report. <laughs> it's quite incredible how much highlighter fits on a single page. Step one, 
Leadership. What is the difference between a leader and a manager? Authentic, situational, servant, transformational. Who are you as a leader? What have you learned about yourself and what are your perspectives of leadership? What are your goals? Wow, the journey has really started. The brains have been engaged at a level like never before and our life has become a balance between self-doubt and determination. Who will win? Step two, marketing. Already, surely not. Five Ps, four Cs, segmentation, brand image, 30 elements of consumer value, market persona, marketing mix, and just like that, you've produced your first official marketing plan. Two down, 10 to go. Step three and four, operations management and corporate governance. Hazen, Wheelwright, Diagonals, Importance, Performance, Matrices, Sand Cone Models, and your first nervous presentation at an operational improvement plan within your organization, Revision 563. Sarbanes, Oxley Act, Sex, Board Diversity, Corporate Social Responsibility, Form 10K, and your reports. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and your reports are over 200 pages long. Caffeine, please. Financial risk, non-financial risk. Excessive and copious amounts of coffee and corporate governance is in the bag. A certificate for your efforts. I guess you've worked hard enough, but self-doubt is still there. Can you really do this? Can you keep going? Should you perhaps put the studies on hold? Is the sacrifice really worth the effort? Determination kicks in. Let's keep pushing on. Let's get halfway across the proverbial dam. But oh dear, step five, financial management. <laughs> really should have read the warning signs on the side of the tin. Hieroglyphics, let me be specific. It's time to get down in those balance sheets. Capital budgeting, dividend policy, liquidity management, net present value, IRR, discounted payback, current ratio, and your very own excessive alcoholic debt ratio. <laughs> but you're now able to navigate the financials and contributes in a way that you never dreamed before. The mist is starting to lift. Business terminology is starting to make sense. Webinar study groups, those. Thank God for our librarian, Barbara Coat moments. Google Scholar, EBSCO host, Market Line, Ibis World. So much information, so little time. Step six, seven, and eight. Human resource project and strategic management. VRINs, RE models, PESTLs, context maps, SWATs, power interest grids, work breakdown structures, and your brave first attempt at. Boss, I've been thinking about future growth within our organization, and I suggest we apply a concentric related and internally developed strategic diversification theory that will pass Porter's three tests of shareholder value. <laughs> Dave, I know you're studying your MBA, but we still speak English here. <laughs> we can now recruit, resource, position, plan, and execute with confidence, as evidenced by another certificate. The end is in sight, the must-dos are done, and the electives have us excited about life post-MBA. We split up, we follow our unique paths, continuing to push ourselves and refine our skills. Budding entrepreneurs, bean counters, marketers, logistics, HR, or in my case, what on earth is the fourth industrial revolution? Roll on artificial intelligence, digital business startup, and business consulting. The blinkers are now officially off, and the world is starting to become clear. Just in time for a final challenge. A case study project to bring it all together, one last push, one last boost of excitement. One last bit of relief euphoria at that final submission. Endless refreshes on the results page. And finally, that green bar loads. You've done it. Book the tickets, rent the gown. A lifelong dream has been achieved and it's time to celebrate. So to everyone, I say, well done. Well done for having the courage and conviction to do it in your very own unique way, for continuing when the road got tough, for adapting 
when the whole globe went crazy and for enduring when that finish line just seemed so far away. I've been asked a lot recently about my advice for studies, and to me there's one single most important element. Like every boxer in the ring, you cannot succeed without a powerful support corner. These are the people that are your important people. They pick you up and dust you off when you've been knocked down, they celebrate with you when you're on top, and they cheer you on and believe in your goal just as much as you do. They stick by you through thick and thin, the husband, the wife, the partner, the family, the friend. They deserve just as much credit as all of us here today. So to all of you, our support corners, we pass on our sincerest thanks. <laughs> to my wife, Catherine, who homeschooled two very interesting and naughty children as we traveled through Africa with dad frantically trying to study when the electricity and the Wi-Fi allowed. I cannot thank you enough, and I promise you, I will not let Joe convince me into completing a doctorate. <laughs> D is for doctorate, D is for divorce. <laughs> Our journey was unique, and it's just evidence of the strange ways we are able to operate in this VUCA world together as a team. In closing, my challenge to all of you today is to stay unfulfilled. As leaders of the future, you have shown tenacity, competence, and a will to succeed in achieving your MBA, and we have more work to do. Our future is changing. 10,000 baby boomers are retiring every single day, and millennials are starting to dominate the, work, the workforce. This shift has seen a big change in focus from my paycheck to what's my purpose from my job satisfaction to my development, from my boss to my coach, from an absolute obsession with finding people's weaknesses and fixing them to appreciating people's unique talents and growing them into strengths, and finally, my job into my life. We are part of this important shift, so let's continue to dream big, laugh more, set goals, and work towards the greater good of our society so that we can inspire and lead a greater future. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Uh, if you haven't caught up with David, and he'll be at the party tonight, I believe, um, here's some very interesting tales of studying under thatched huts at midnight being eaten by, uh, eaten by mosquitoes. We are nearing the very end of today's ceremony. And to describe it as a celebration, I think now would be an understatement. My hands are sore from clapping so much. Um, so I would like to conclude today by reading out a letter from the founder of Australian Institute of Business, um, Emeritus Professor Selva Abraham, who unfortunately was unable to be with us today, but asked me to share his best wishes with you. And it is his 77th birthday, which I'm not sure if that's why he can't make it. Possibly. He's got a lot of energy. Dear graduates, warmest congratulations to all of you for having completed your studies. Your journey to arrive at this point would have been challenging as you would have had to find time to study while coping with the demands of your family, employment, social needs, and of course, the COVID pandemic. Whilst you have learned to apply in the workplace the knowledge that you have gained from AIB, now is the time for you to look for learning opportunities for your further growth. As you start exploring this new journey of learning and change, I would encourage you to spend some time to reflect on your strengths and weaknesses in the context of this ever-changing environment and to try and match your strengths with the opportunities available. You would be familiar with this process, having covered it in your studies in the context of your workplace. Here, I am proposing that you use the same process for your lifetime development and professional, de professional learning. Peter Senge says, through learning, we recreate ourselves. Through learning, we are able to do something we were never able to do. I am a firm believer in the power of learning for change. After all, living and learning cannot be separated. In my case, for example, 
feels strange saying that when it's not me. I recreated myself. I, in my case, for example, after stepping down as chairman of AIB, I recreated myself to develop a global centre for work applied learning which empowers individuals, teams and organisations to recreate and change. Today I have turned 77. I look good. If I, can, if I can keep going at this age, I don't see why you can't as well. I would like to end by sharing Albert Einstein's words which cap capture my message to you today. Learn from yesterday, live for today and hope for tomorrow. The important thing is to never stop questioning. And to that, I would add, and continue learning and recreating yourself for the future. I think he has captured the message that we are all feeling here today. And so, Selva, I hope you're watching and thank you. So on behalf of all of us here today, a huge thank you to Tammy, to Uncle Mickey, to the Lord Mayor, and a particularly heartfelt thank you to the staff and faculty at AIB. They work hard every day to transform lives and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I'm sure you can imagine that event, an event like this is not easy to organise, particularly with ever-changing rules. And so I would also like to extend a special thank you to the team who has put today on. Uh, so to Fiona, uh, who has led the charge and ably supported by a number of people, but particularly Annalise, Christy and Alicia. Thank you for everything that you've done to put on such a special occasion. For those who are attending the cocktail party tonight, you get a long lunch between now and then. Uh, it commences at five o'clock in rooms A and B upstairs. You will need your ticket to be let in. I would like finally to thank everyone for attending our ceremony today, especially those that travelled from interstate and overseas to be here. It feels like a little game of dodgeball at the moment with restrictions and COVID. Um, and for those who are in Adelaide, I hope that you stay in touch. Uh, I would like finally for everyone to please stand and join me in a final round of applause to celebrate the extraordinary achievements of our graduates. We wish you every success.